Greetings. My name is Karen Bandine Roach. I'm the Frank Hurley and Catherine Dorier Professor and Chair of Biostatistics at Johns Hopkins. And it's my pleasure to be with you today to go over a very brief module to introduce competing risks analysis. So if one does as I've just described, Cox regression on the event of interest treating all other causes than the one of interest as censoring, this will characterize the cause-specific hazard function. That was beautifully laid out in the paper by Prentice, which was distributed to you beforehand. The citation is listed at the bottom of this slide. And so we're characterizing the cause-specific hazard in terms of a baseline cause-specific hazard, and then once again, multiplicative factors um, for the contributions of other covariates. On the next slide, I see there's a, a typo that should be E to the beta J, not just beta J itself. So E to the beta J now equals for a one unit increase in XJ, the relative hazard of failing first due to cause K holding all of the other covariates constant. And so that's the part of the interpretation that's very, very important. So relative hazard of failing due to cause K, which, which specifically means failing due to cause K before any of the other failure causes happens. So bottom line, same method, different interpretation. And for this method to be fully useful, one really wants to compare results for each index cause um, so that one can see what happens across those causes. And I'll show you sort of an example of that here. So again, this is from the Johns Hopkins Hospital COVID-19 data. This is up until the end of October. And so this is the results of implementing exactly a Cox model with careful definition of censoring, just as I described, among 1,129 individuals who were in the hospital, but still of mild or moderate status at 20, 24 hours. And so here we're gonna compare the cause specific analyses for two of the possible competing events, progression to severe status before death, before discharge, or death, and now notice here, death to be fully competing before the onset of severe disease, also before discharge. If I were to be complete about this, I'd need a third one for discharge before pro progression to severe disease or death. And so let's observe what we see. On the left, you can see the analysis for severe status before death or discharge. On the right, death before onset of severe disease or discharge. And so let's look at the very first coefficient in orange which is comparing black Americans to white Americans as a reference group. And again, admitted to the Johns Hopkins Hospital. So that's a hazard ratio. It's indicating about a 50% higher hazard for black than white on the left, but let's just be careful. 50% increased risk of progression to severe disease before death or discharge. That phrase is very important in order to interpret this correctly. And then similarly on the right, we can see a sort of a similarly sized coefficients where black pa patients, again, as compared to their white counterparts, are at 40% increased risk of death before progression to severe disease or dis discharge. And so by comparing these, we can see that at least for black versus white, it's a comparable inflation of risk, whether it's for progression to severe disease first or to dying before severe disease ever is experienced. Let's compare that about halfway down the page with age. And so this is just a simple uh, age coefficient um, having to do with risk changes per one year increase of age, just to make the interpretation simple. And so for severe status, there's actually 
not a major association with age. So we would interpret that with a, a relatively high p-value as showing not much evidence of differential risk of progressing to severe disease before death um, for age. At the right, though, you see something very different for death before severe disease, where per additional, I guess this is actually standard deviation, that's what the S means, per additional standard deviation of age, the risk of death before onset of severe status is multiplied by a factor of two for older versus younger. And again, what we're mostly seeing here is the effect of the oldest old ages, whereby oldest old individuals often have a do not intubate order such that they really aren't at risk to uh, experience severe disease. That's why you see no association on the left, but this large association on the right with experiencing death before intubation, they go straight to mortality because they refuse intubation. And then finally, at the bottom of the page, there's something a little bit interesting having to do with calendar time. So those last two orange coefficients per each chart are comparing June to July or August to October, respectively, to the March to May time period and asking what were the relative risks of each cause-specific event later versus earlier. And so on the left, you know, there's certainly with the, the estimate a, a hint of a 15 to 20% um, reduction in risk of progression to severe disease before death or discharge um, in June or August compared to May, but it's not statistically significant. And so the common wisdom that things sort of got better after that early spike in the summer and fall wasn't all that striking for severe status where we really saw it was for death. And so you can see that on the right with a 60% decrease in June to July and an 85% decrease in August to October of experiencing death before discharge. Um, not statistically significant, relatively small numbers, um, but, but very striking that that's where, you know, the real improvement seemed to be. It was in death, not so much in the onset of severe disease. Now, the last thing I've animated in is to reconsider the death analysis without treating severe disease as a competing risk. After all, individuals can experience severe disease and then die, right? We, we didn't have to define for death severe diseases competing. We did it on this chart as a way to compare all of the competing risks together. Um, but if we were only interested in death before discharge, you can see that there was a reduction in June to July and August to October compared to earlier in the year but not nearly the magnitude that we saw for the competing risk of death before discharge. And so that sort of indicates that really the, the lion's share of what was going on was for these oldest old individuals, uh, a substantial improvement in rescuing them from death. <laughs>